Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Carrie Collins from Stretch Chi in Chicago. I'm going to teach you today some strengthening and stretching exercises for your IT band to help with IT band syndrome. We're going to focus mainly on the muscles of the glutes and the abductor muscle group, including a very special muscle called the tensor fascia lata, which runs right here along the outside of the hip. This muscle group is really important if you are a runner and you suffer from IT band syndrome. So you can do this exercise routine a couple times a week to kind of keep you in check, keep some strength and flexibility in these muscle groups to take away some of the pain and inflammation that gets caused through your routines of running and um, the pain in your IT band, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is some resistance stretching exercises. There are some things that you need to know first though before we dive into these. The first thing is when we do resistance stretching, we're actually making sure that we always are moving. Stretching in this way, is um, it doesn't help you to hold a stretch and count. We're never gonna hold a position. We're always gonna be moving in and out of a stretch or a strength training move. Second thing, we're always going to be resisting. There will always be tension in your muscle when you're moving it. That way we get deep into the belly of the muscle. It's gonna feel good, like a burning sensation, as opposed to a tendony stretching sensation. All right, the last thing, when we stretch in this way, we wanna make sure that we're staying out of pain. No pain equals no pain. Now, if you're a runner, you know the phrase, no pain, no gain. Well, that's true if you're trying to get over a hump or if you're trying to get past mile 10, you're gonna feel a little bit of pain. But in the stretching world, we don't believe that pain is helpful for you. So you wanna stay out of pain, all right? So here we go into our stretching routine. What I want you to do is lay on your side Lay on your right side body. You're gonna take your left hand and put it on top of your left leg. And we're gonna do a stretch that we call the fire hydrant stretch. You're going to put a little bit of force down on your left leg and then lift the entire leg off the ground and then relax it down. Push up and then relax down. Your legs here are at a 90 degree angle. Up and relax down. Push up again and relax down. And we'll do one more, push up and this time, hold your left leg in the air, take your left hand and slowly push it down against the force of your left leg. Bring that left leg back up and slowly push it down. This is the stretch, slowly pushing down. It may not feel like a stretch, it may feel like a burning sensation in your glutes and that's okay, that's what we want. Let's do one more like that and for our last one, we're gonna actually release the fascia by very slowly straightening the leg out. So you wanna bring your foot in front of you and reach your hip backwards. It's gonna be a more intense stretch. From here, we're gonna go into a long position for your adductors. You're gonna take your left hand again and put it on top of your thigh just for resistance and then lift up. You probably notice that you're already starting to feel a little bit of a burn. So we're gonna do about five strength training motions. And then at this point, go ahead and push down against the force of your left leg for the stretch. And you'll feel this again on the outside of your hip and through your glutes. So my left leg is trying to stay in the air and my right hand is pushing it down. And this is the stretching sensation. And one more. Now the next stretch we're gonna do is a stretch for your tensor fascia lata. It's a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna show you this mode, this move, laying down on my back this way. I'm gonna take my left leg and hook it over my right foot, my right knee, and then I'm gonna bring my knee of my my foot of my right leg out at an angle. And then I'm just gonna pull my right knee away from my body and then use my left leg to pull back down. So I'm pulling my right leg across and my left leg pulls across. So you let your right leg win and that gives me a nice stretch through the side of my hip here. And then my left leg wins. Constant resistance here the entire time. Back and forth. You wanna make sure that you're externally rotating your left leg so your knee is actually away from your body, not curved in towards my nose, but away from the body. 
when my right leg wins, I'm stretching, and when my left leg wins, I'm strength training. Now, we're gonna reverse this by taking the left leg out to the side, and we're gonna get a side angle quad stretch here. So I'm gonna take my right foot and hook it over my left knee and allow my left knee to drop into the ground and then pushing up. There's constant resistance between my right foot and my left knee. My hips are staying on the ground and I like to be up on my elbows to try to keep my hips planted on the floor. But you can also lay down as you do this if it feels better to you. I let my left leg push against my right foot and my right foot wins for the stretch and comes up for the strength. And you may not have range to go all the way to the floor and that's okay, just go to where it feels comfortable. All right, now that we've done those few stretches, we're gonna switch sides. I'm gonna have you lay on your left side with your knees bent at a 90 degree angle and your hips bent also at a 90 degree angle to your body. Your right hand is gonna go on your hip and you will push up for strength. Pushing up for strength while your right hand slows you down. And now I want you to hold your right leg up in the air and use your right hand to push it down to the floor. Come back up with your right leg and use your hand to push it down to the floor against resistance. This is the stretching sensation. Now let's do one more stretch. And then this last time, I want you to straighten the leg out for the fascial release, bringing your foot in front of your body and pulling this hip back towards the back wall. Great, and now we're gonna stretch out into a long position. I'm gonna put my right hand on top of my right leg and push up. If you feel like you're gonna fall over, this is a good one to engage your core. So you can make sure that your core is engaged, it's gonna help. Or you can even place your hands on the floor and do this without your hand on top of your leg. For the stretch though, you're gonna need that hand and you can push yourself down. So the right, hand, the right leg stays up in the air and your right hand pushes you down towards the floor. I'm trying to keep my right leg up as my right hand pushes down. And one more stretch. So I'm going to keep my right leg up in the air while my right hand wins to push it down. Now we're gonna go on to our TFL stretch like I was showing you before, but this time I'll do it on my side so that you can see what it looks like from the side. I'm gonna take my right foot and hook it over my left knee and then bring my left leg out at about a 90 degree, or I'm sorry, a 45 degree angle. Then I'm gonna drop in, try to pull my legs apart, and I'm gonna actually pull my left leg away from my body so that I'm stretching out the side of this hip. Notice that this knee is not pulled in towards my nose, but away from my nose. And then I'm gonna let my right leg win and pull back. My hips are staying down on the ground. And I feel comfortable in this position with my elbows because it really plants my hips on the ground. But if you'd like to lay down, that's fine. You just wanna make sure that you're not rolling over. If I roll, I'm losing the stretch. So make sure that your hips stay down on the ground as you pull your left leg away from your body, pulling this right leg across your body and then letting your right leg win for strength training. Good. Now we're gonna drop the right leg out to a 45 degree angle, and the left leg is gonna hook over top so we can stretch out the side of our quads. You're gonna drop your knee in while keeping your hips on the ground. Feel free to come up on your elbows if you feel like that really plants your hips down. Let your right leg win for strength, and your left leg wins for your stretch. My right leg is pushing up against the force of my left leg, and my left leg wins on the way down for the stretch, but notice I am not letting my back off the ground or letting this, my spine twist at all. Down to the floor for your stretch and up for strength. And down again for stretch and up for strength. Good. 
Great. Now we're going to move on to a couple of different stretches. We need to also stretch out our inner thighs and our hip flexors if we want to be really productive with our stretching. So I'm going to have you put your right leg bent, kneeling, and your left leg out at a long angle with your feet, toes pointing forward. Then I'm going to take my arms and grab my wrists together and I'm going to pull like I'm going to pull them apart but they're actually going to stay locked in. Once I do that I can really feel the activation. I'm going to push my foot down into the ground as well and that's going to help with my left foot pushing into the ground. You're really going to feel some pressure in your inner thigh. From here I'm going to reach over towards my left side. That's going to give me a great stretch in my right side body and also in my left inner thigh. Then I'm going to pull out of it. And then I'm going to pull back, letting my left arm win. And then pull back, letting my right arm win. So my left arm is creating a stretch and my right arm is creating a strength training motion. Pulling to the side for the stretch and pulling back up for strength. And let's do one more. Over for your stretch and up for strength. Now I'm going to take my left leg and bring it to the front of my body into a square lunge. And then I'm going to activate my psoas muscle by trying to scissor my legs together. So I'm actually pulling my right leg forward and catching that resistance by planting my left foot into the ground to keep me from falling over. Once you've got that activated, then you can start to move back and forth to get a nice stretch through your hip flexor. Strength is when you pull back and the stretch happens when you pull forward. This is a really good juicy muscle, so you can try to play around with it, twisting and turning, finding where you're tight, even lifting up, finding a really good stretch through your hip flexor. And now we're gonna switch. So I'm gonna have you take your left leg, kneel on the floor, and your right leg straight out with your toes pointing forward. Push that right leg into the ground so that you feel an activation in your right inner thigh, and then clasp your hands over your head and add resistance like you're trying to pull your hands apart. Once you've got that resistance, then you can start the stretch. So we're gonna move into a stretch by leaning to the right, and then move out of the stretch by pulling to the left. Lean to the right, and pull to the left. Your stretch happens when you lean to the right by pulling with your right arm, and then your strength happens when you pull with your left arm towards the left side. You feel a nice stretch through your left side body and your right inner thigh. Good, and now take that right foot in front into a square lunge. You're gonna activate your legs by trying to pull your left leg up and away from your body towards your nose, and your right foot is actually going to engage by trying to hold you from pulling backwards. It's going to feel like if you were trying to slide your foot back on the floor, like you were trying to take your sock off. Once you're in that position, then we're going to pull in and out of this hip flexor stretch. So you pull into the stretch and then pull out for strength. You can move your arms however you want. You can try twisting around see what feels good to you. Remember, stretching is all about staying out of pain. Play around with it. Find where you're tight. See if you can pull that tension out. And even try raising your hands above your head. Great. All right. What our last stretch we're going to do is your typical runner stretch that you've probably done a million times, especially if you're a runner, you're gonna lay on your back and take your left leg over your right knee and then reach through and grab your right leg behind. Uh, but instead of just pulling and holding, we're actually gonna push with our left leg away from our body. So I'm gonna push open and then pull in for my stretch. My left leg is always resisting against my right knee and I'm always moving and I'm staying out of pain. We push my left leg forward and then pull back. Good. 
And let's do one more. Push out for strength and pull in for your stretch. And let's switch sides. The right leg is gonna go over the left knee. You're gonna reach through and grab your left leg with your hands. Push with your right leg away from your body. And then use your arms to pull in. So as I push out, I'm strength training my glutes. My hands are slowing me down. And then as I pull in, I'm resisting with my right leg so that I really feel a deep stretch in my glutes. I push out for strength and I pull in for my stretch. If you want a little extra, just push your right elbow into your right leg and that creates more rotation in the hip. Very good. So this series of stretches can really keep some strength and flexibility in your glutes and in your abductor muscles. What this does is it builds stability so that your IT band doesn't need to work so hard and it doesn't need to become inflamed or overstretched in a way that um, won't bring stability to your knees. We want stability in the knees, we want stability in the hips. And this is a great way to do it. So enjoy and I hope to see you all soon.